motivational workout videos. The iconic videos of Ronnie Coleman, wait, wait, and Jay Cutler, Tom Platz, and Dorian Yates <laughs> make up a significant piece of bodybuilding lore on YouTube. Anybody who's ever looked for motivation and inspiration in the gym has made watching these videos a part of their daily routines at one point in time. Derek was no different. Despite not being a big bodybuilding fan initially, his immersion into the sport through these videos caused him to not only develop a newfound love and admiration for bodybuilding, but a fire to compete himself. He also credits an unknown bodybuilding documentary for causing him to fall in love with the sport, but it's highly likely that it was either pumping iron or generation iron given the time frame. Derek eventually incorporated informational and educational content on maximizing hypertrophy. He'd take tips from a lot of bodybuilders content at the time, using that content as a placeholder for a coach. He'd consolidate the best advice that he could get from some of his favorite pros to form his ideal split and diet. According to Derek though, no other pro had been more inspirational to him than Jay Cutler. However, without having Jay there to coach him, Derek needed the guidance of someone else, and he'd get that in James Brown. James Brown was Derek's manager at a supplement shop he was working at in Vincennes, Indiana, who became his first bodybuilding coach. Deciding to work seriously with James represented a pivotal turning point in Derek's life. He didn't just decide to pursue a career in bodybuilding, he decided to fully commit himself and his life to the sport. Derek says about working with James, he would give me tips in the gym on how to train properly and smarter. He would give me diet tips here and there. Finally, I just went all out and made him my coach. His decision wasn't difficult, because once Derek felt what he called ignorant confidence, he set on a goal to make a massive name for himself in bodybuilding within the next 2-3 to three years. 2014 was the year he made that commitment, and he gave himself one year to step on stage for the first time. He didn't know how good he could really be, but knew he was going to do everything he could to become one of the greats. For Derek, there was no doubt as to how bad he wanted it. No doubt as to whether he'd be able to conform to the lifestyle change, and no doubt that bodybuilding was what he considered his calling from within. With those realizations, it was time for Derek to get to work. Under the tutelage of James Brown, Derek put work in the gym in an effort to get his physique to the next level. Derek made his bodybuilding debut at the 2015 Indianapolis Championships as a welterweight and competing in the Open, and all Derek did was win the overall at his first show. A very impressive feat for a debutante. This victory validated to Derek that the praise he had been getting about his physique was not just flattery. He truly had the makings of an elite bodybuilder. Now, despite the newfound confidence, dominating a show becomes a lot harder when going from the local level to the national level. Because at nationals, everyone is talented and loaded with potential. So having qualified for junior nationals at his first amateur show, he couldn't pass up on the opportunity to step on that stage as early as possible. Derek stepped on stage at the 2015 NPC Junior Nationals and brought an impressive package at Walter Waite once again. What made Derek stand out was his incredible shape and the flow he had to his physique. His symmetry was excellent and his lat to waist ratio was reminiscent of the aesthetics of the golden era. His back, however, was the shining feature of his physique as his development was far ahead for most 22 year old competitors. His leg development needed improvement, specifically in the hamstrings, but he knew how to pose to maximize his best features. Derek left Rosemont, Illinois, the NPC Junior National welterweight and overall champion, a rare feat given his size, with a lot of improvement on the horizon. He dove back into the offseason in preparation for another appearance at Junior Nationals in 2016, but this time in the middleweight division. See, it was clear that Derek's build and shape was perfect for bodybuilding, he just needed more mass. So with a decent amount of lean muscle added to his physique and an improvement on his conditioning, Derek went back to Rosemont and was lights out at the 2016 NPC Junior Nationals. The difference was vastly noticeable everywhere, because he not only improved in his leg development, but his back, arms, and every other muscle group that already stood out. Most notably, his quad sweep was a lot more prominent, making his front poses look way more impressive. All in all, Derek turned heads at this show, a sentiment which the judges clearly agreed with as he was rewarded with the middleweight victory and the overall victory. This was his bodybuilding coming out party, where the entire industry would be brought to the attention of the name Derek Lunsford. How do you feel? I feel on top of the world, man. Um, you know, I'm a loss for words, to be honest. I'm just, I feel so blessed, man. I had such a good support system behind me through the, you know, not just this weekend, um, obviously, but, uh, you know, through the last several months of, of dieting and, and the training, you know, when I, I'm suffering and things, uh, they're behind me and all my friends and family, so um, I'm, I'm on top of the world right now, man. In just one year into his career, an overall winner at a national show, a career trajectory and pace that had only been seen in the all-time greats.
Lee Haney, Dorian Yates, and his idol Jake Cutler are all bodybuilding legends with similar starts to their careers. So suffice to say, the future was looking extremely bright for Derek Lunsford. Further validating his path was the fact that seasoned veterans were reassuring him that he had what it took to be great. This improvement in just one year was the green light that Derek and his coach needed to step up and compete with the big boys at the NPC USA Championships. He had gotten into the habit of training six days a week with a focus on abs and legs, as well as high reps with control and drop sets. He'd eat every two to three hours and place a heavy emphasis on macronutrients. So at the 2016 NPC USA Championships, Derek stepped on stage as a middleweight and impressed once again. The added mass did not affect his lines and conditioning, as he brought a very well put together package with size everywhere. It was Derek Lunsford 2.0, and it was looking like it would be inevitable that he'd get that coveted pro card eventually. It was just a matter of when. Now, Derek would miss out in 2016 on a pro card due to finishing second place behind an impressive Charles Curtis. After his 2016 Nationals runner-up, Derek decided to take a year-long break to grow and come back significantly better in pursuit of that pro card. He set his sights on the 2017 USA Championships and grinded in the offseason to continue improving. Derek stepped on stage at the 2017 NPC USA Championships, this time a light heavyweight. And the added size was exactly what Derek needed to take the next step. It was incredible how he managed to come in with that much added size and look even more aesthetic and full than the year before. It was outstanding what he brought to the stage. The improvement in his vascularity, hamstrings, and back were absolutely jaw-dropping and set Derek up to run away with the overall victory and ultimate distinction for an amateur bodybuilder. IFBB Pro Status Derek in 2014 set out to be one of the biggest names in bodybuilding within two to three years, and in his third year, he was not only officially a pro, but widely considered as the hottest commodity in bodybuilding. His accomplishment can be put in even better perspective when looking at the quote that he gave to the Tribune star. Derek says, When I first started to compete, my goal was to shock the stage. I think I pretty much accomplished that, but I was not completely satisfied. I knew I could be even better. And Derek was not only leaps and bounds better, but accelerating at a rate that very few could match. Wasting no time, Derek made his pro debut one month after USA's at the 2017 Tampa Pro. He knew he had the makings of a top contender immediately, so there was no reason why he couldn't test his physique among some of the best in the world and see where he stacked up. Standing 5'6", it only made sense for Derek, given his development at the time, to compete in the 212 division. His proportions and size were made for that division, and with the lack of elite talent across the board, he stood a very good chance at making a strong impression. On show day, however, he did a lot more than that. He dominated the prejudging, bringing the most complete package of the top six and performing like a veteran rather than a rookie, like he had been in that position before. When the finals were announced, he was awarded the first place medal and crown the 2017 Tampa Pro Champion, winning his debut in dominant fashion. What did you think about this whole, when he said I want to be a bodybuilder, and I don't know if he ever said I want to be a pro bodybuilder, it's kind of an odd different thing for someone to want to be. What were your thoughts about it? I believed in him. I knew if he said he was going to do something that he would do it. <laughs> and he said he wanted to be a bodybuilder. I said, great, I want to follow you, watch you, enjoy it. Then he said I want to be Mr. Olympia. I believed in him. Can't now, say that just yet. Well, but you're headed to, to <laughs> the Olympia. We'll, we'll headed to the Olympia. I still believe in you, and I still know you will be Love Mr. You. Olympia. With this kind of momentum and start to his career, it only made sense with the Mr. Olympia right around the corner that Derek would throw his hat in the race. The 212 lineup was set to feature the best in the entire division, which included Jose Raymond, another one of Derek's biggest inspirations coming up in the industry. Not to mention reigning 212 champion Flex Lewis who was seeking to capture his sixth title. Being able to simply grace the stage with that company was an honor in and of itself. But at the end of the day, it was still a competition and Derek still had to prove that he was deserving. Next competitor, won the USA, won his first pro show, and here he is at his first Olympia. Please welcome Derek Lutzberg. He'd head into the show more relaxed than ever due to the stakes being so low. Still, he brought his best physique to date with better color, size, and conditioning than Tampa. Although minor, Derek did make a noticeable improvement in the month leading up to the Olympia. That improvement, however, was still not enough to hang with the likes of Flex, Ahmad Ashkanani, Jose Raymond, and David Henry as Derek finished in 5th place. This was the worst placing of his career thus far. But considering it was his rookie season and he still displayed the best shape on stage, it was clear that Derek with enough determination could very well be the future of the 212 division. 
top five at your first Mr. Olympia and your first year as a pro is highly impressive regardless of division. So with Derek being the new contender on the block, as well as his quick progression as a pro, his name was starting to make the rounds in the entire bodybuilding community because of his eye-popping shape highlighted by his tiny waist. Derek hadn't realized it yet, but the expectations around him were going to start to mount. With a top 5 placing at the Olympia, there was no need for Derek to do any other shows. He was coming for Flex Lewis and coming for the Olympia title. The anticipation for the improvement that Derek would make would be very high, especially considering he'd have all the time in the world to grow and improve while focusing on peaking his physique perfectly. With Derek now in the mix, the 212 division had gotten more exciting than it ever had been before, and with the 2018 Olympia underway, it was time for everyone to see the next iteration of Derek Lunsford. With the initial comparisons over and the prejudging underway, Derek was placed right next to Flex Lewis, clearly indicating that the judges had seen enough improvement from 2017 to move him up. He was tighter than the previous year and brought a slightly better condition package, which only improved as he kept posing. With Flex Lewis bringing incredible mass and proportion, and Kamal bringing razor sharp conditioning, Derek was going to have to ensure that his presentation would be perfect to have a crack at the title. It was Flex Lewis's last Olympia appearance, and for Derek to be able to dethrone him would be a story for the ages, but to do that, he'd have to get through Kamal. The judges would bring back Derek, Flex, and Kamal for the final comparisons of prejudging to solidify the top three. So regardless of what happened moving forward, Derek was going to improve on his 2017 placing. It was the past versus the present versus the future in one of the best callouts of that entire Olympia. Staying under 212 pounds, it's Thank exploding through the division line. is what's happening. And that concludes our 212 preliminary judging and uh, we're going to see tomorrow night how it plays out. With the finals underway, the general consensus was that Flex Lewis had retained, considering the fact that he was never moved during prejudging and made both Derek and Kamal look small all while bringing great conditioning. It was clear that Flex was probably going to get number 7. What created the most anticipation, however, was who was going to come in second. Was the up-and-comer Derek Lunsford going to make the massive leap from fifth to runner-up? Or was the vet Kamal Algarni going to stop him in his tracks? Well, when Kamal was announced as third place finisher, it was just Derek and Flex standing side by side. The angst was palpable through the screen as Derek was unable to stand still with the light shining brighter than they ever had. The prospect of being in contention for the title made things incredibly real. But when it was time to announce second place, In the eyes of the judges, Derek was the second best 212 bodybuilder in the world and made a leap big enough to validate that top two placing. Now, if he hadn't already arrived, the 2018 Mr. Olympia would be Derek Lunsford's coming out party. And with Flex Lewis's retirement leaving the 212 throne empty, it seemed like it was Derek's turn to take the division into the next generation. Despite not reaching his goal of winning the title, he had the most fun at a show he had ever had due to just being happy to be there. With Derek riding the high of a second place placing at the Olympia, the work was not done. Being allergic to complacency, he knew he had to work harder than he ever had in his career if he was going to win the next Olympia, an idea which seemed surreal given how quickly he became a contender. At 26 years old, Derek had established a reputation as one of the most promising young talents in bodybuilding, but with that title came a different magnitude of expectation that Derek hadn't dealt with before. He had only been improving over the last few years and the expectation of the 2019 Olympia was that Derek would eventually get over the hump. The majority of his prep was spent grinding away and documenting his progress all over social media platforms with YouTube giving his fans the most intimate insight. As the show drew closer, all of the excitement around the 212 division would center around who would become the successor to Flex Lewis. An overwhelming majority of people were leaning towards Derek taking the title, assuming he was able to at least replicate his package from 2018. And this was also assuming that Kamal Algargni wouldn't make a drastic improvement at 50 years old. Well, when the initial comparisons and individual routines were over, Derek did bring a package on par with 2018. The only issue was Kamal. See, Kamal being a lot older couldn't play the size game with Derek, so he had to maximize his biggest strength, conditioning. Kamal brought the best conditioning of any athlete at the entire Olympia that year. He was absolutely razor sharp from top to bottom, and in that first callout, it was very apparent. Kamal's graininess and dense muscle tissue was the ultimate display of muscle maturity considering he was twice Derek's age. But that didn't stop the vet. He brought his best package ever, and neither Sean Clarita or Derek was ready. 
What also didn't help Derek was the fact that he was holding on to a bit of water. This isn't usually a big deal for supremely talented bodybuilders, but standing next to Kamal, who was bone dry and complete all around, really exposed Derek and Sean's inferior conditioning. From the ridiculous detail in his back to his impeccable ab separation in his front shots, the prejudging was all Kamal Lagragni. Despite that, the fans of Derek were hoping for a finals comeback. When the finals came around, Kamal only got drier and harder while Derek was still working on shedding a little bit of water. While he was still better than the rest of the lineup, it wasn't clear who the judges were favoring considering they were both at center stage. But while Kamal improved with every pose, Derek was looking more and more washed out as the finals were coming to a close. And at that point, it seemed pretty clear who was going to get the victory. The check for $20,000, the Olympia silver medal to our runner-up this evening. Derek Lunsford. All right, there it is. There it is, Kamal Elgarni. Derek Lunsford, second place. I, I'm telling you, it came down to muscular oh. maturity. Kamal had that maturity at 47 years young, held off the 26-year-old. Derek's going to see a whole lot of days like this, and uh, he's going to do nothing else but improve. I mean, look at the shape. Look, look at, the, at the shape. For the second consecutive year, Derek was the Olympia runner-up, a result he was immensely disappointed in. According to Derek, this was his toughest loss to accept. Despite his best efforts, the best man won at the 2019 Olympia and not only became one of the many new champions that year, but the oldest competitor to win an Olympia in any division in history. With the Olympia being his only show for the year, as it had been for the last few years, there was no reason why this wouldn't be the year of Derek, but all fans could do is wait. As the prejudging was underway, it was pretty evident early on that Derek was going to struggle. His conditioning was worse in 2019 as he lacked the separation and fullness that we all knew he was capable of. What didn't help matters was the fact that Kamal, Sean, and the rest of that lineup brought their best conditioning, which was surely to expose Derek. His structure had always been one of the best in the entire bodybuilding industry, but his inability to nail his conditioning was hurting his chances at capturing that elusive Olympia title. With the transition to each new pose leading to no changes in movement for Derek, he found himself in the same spot until the end of the callout where he was moved to the outside and surpassed by Ahmad Ashkanani, deservingly. Not only was Derek no longer in the hunt to win, but he was out of the top three entirely, a revelation which was a blow to the gut. To be the guy in the division who was supposed to be the next up and to fall so many placings in front of the entire bodybuilding world was devastating. He was now right back where he was in 2019, except the mountain he had to climb was significantly greater. The transformation he would need to have by the finals was just unrealistic and impractical to achieve. And the question going into the finals was, what happened to Derek Lunsford? Despite coming back slightly improved from the prejudging, that wouldn't be enough as everyone else in that lineup did the exact same, and the final comparisons reflected that. He had put on a great posing routine for the fans and still displayed his appreciation for the art, but knew that he had come up short. Sean Clarita would win his first Olympia, beating Kamal who came in second, followed by the late George Peterson in third. His disappointment was immense, and a fourth place finish a massive disappointment. That package was not Derek at his best. He had width that could rival most open competitors, and a V-taper and vacuum that would shine in even classic, a combination of features that is relatively rare in modern bodybuilding. But surely with his talent and determination, he had what it took to win it all. But in order to figure out what to change, he needed to go back to the drawing board. As Derek stepped on stage for the first time, it was immediately evident that this was the Derek that everyone was waiting for. His color was perfect, lines outstanding as always, but the standout attribute of Derek Lunsford's 2021 Olympia package was his conditioning. It finally seemed like he was peeled out of prejudging, but more importantly, he didn't have to compromise any size as he was still very full. The improvements weren't drastic, but they were definitely noticeable. But this 100% was Derek Lunsford's potential fully maximized at 212, and not a lot of people were sure it was going to happen this year. Coming off of his most disappointing placing as a pro, and showing up at the next Olympia, absolutely lights out was the best story of the entire prejudging. Now, this isn't to downplay Sean and Kamal, as they weren't slouches either, and the disparity between these three guys was very slim. But Derek and Hani helped find the missing piece of the puzzle in the offseason to maximize Derek's beautiful shape. He was finally complete and everyone could see it. It was clear by the end of the prejudging that Derek was the frontrunner for the 212 title. The question is, could he finish the job? When the finals rolled around and he came out for his posing routine, it was very clear who the next 212 Mr. Olympia was. 
If his confidence didn't show during his finals routine, it certainly shined during the confirmation round. Derek's stage presence was as bright as it's ever been and clearly indicative of a guy who was going all out. He had always had a very polished presentation, whether he was in a position to win or not. But the 2021 Olympia felt different. He had an aura that kept anyone who watched that live stream or attended the show continuously gravitating towards him. As him and Sean Clarita battled for the win, the judges maintained the anticipation by keeping just those two out there, giving no indicator as to who was currently in the lead because the reigning champ himself came back and proved. A final swap of positions on the stage further added ambiguity as to who was going to come out on top, but with how impressive both guys were and how hard they were posing in the end, it could go either way. With the confirmation round over and both men brought back out to the stage to announce the winner, the tension and anticipation could be felt through the screen. The question on everyone's mind was whether we would hear and still or He had finally done it. Through his grit, determination, and faith, Derek had grinded his way to an Olympia title, a title that was well earned by knocking off a reigning champ. Anyone who had been following his career up until this point and really got to know Derek the man could feel his overwhelmed emotion on that stage. He had worked so hard to get there, and he absolutely deserved every bit of that moment. All glory to God, 100%. Jesus Christ is my savior. The pre -judgment. this was going to be close. We all could see that you finally brought everything that we thought you could bring the last couple of years. You kept just missing it, just missing it. You finally put it together. New team in place this year, and it paid off in dividends. Yes, sir. Um, it's been several years. Uh, I've been fighting for this title, and um, I just couldn't seem to get it together. I was maybe too focused on other things, other competitors. I don't know what it was. I, I just know that my walk spiritually with Christ wasn't uh, what it is today. That's number one. That's why I keep pointing to the you know, to heavens, man. And um, but yes, my coach Hani Rambod, uh, he has helped me tremendously. You know, become a much better professional bodybuilder all around. You know, it's not just about the physique, it's about the mind too. And uh, focusing on myself and just learning to get better, learning uh, how to be a better bodybuilder and better professional. Um, I have a great, great family. Uh, I wouldn't even call them friends. They're family that keep me, you know, grounded you, you and focused um, place, in, in bodybuilding and life with Christ. That's and right. and I, I couldn't do it without you either. So all, all of you, you guys give me so much support. I love you all. Thank you so much. The excitement and anticipation alone was enough to create an aura for the Olympia that had been lacking for the last few years. With Big Rami looking to three-peat and a cavalry of talent at his heels, everyone including myself couldn't wait for December. From the moment Derek came out in the individuals at Prejudging, it was clear that we were about to witness something very special. His open debut was the most highly anticipated storyline of the show because of the speculation over the last year. But the moment that Derek hit that front relax pose, he proved that he was meant to be there and that his special invite was not a waste. He was obviously bigger than he had ever been on stage, which was expected. But what was more impressive was how well he carried that weight and how full he looked fully dieted down. Any detractor who thought he'd be too small was promptly proven wrong. This was a different beast, with every standout feature still there, but with more muscle. His already impressive back looked even more impressive with the added size, and the same could be said about his legs. That already impressive V taper looked even gnarlier in that vacuum, and it was a drastic step up for his total package. The only weakness was that thorn in his side his entire career. Conditioning. He could have dieted a bit more and come in a lot drier, but nonetheless, he still brought enough to be competitive and shock the stage once again, as had been his mission his entire career. When it was time to announce the first callouts during prejudging, his name was called. The judges clearly thought he could hang with the big boys and it was time for him to prove that. He was placed right at center stage with Hadi Chupan at his all-time best. A massive test right away, but Derek did more than hold his own, as he did push the frontrunner. Hadi and Derek remained in the middle for the rest of the pre-judging as Nick Walker and Sam Sandata fought for third, and the reigning champ Big Rami was fighting for fourth place with Brandon Curry. A shocking development. As the pre-judging ended, the judges placed Brandon and Nick in the center, but it was clear that they were being compared for third or fourth place. Derek and Hadi were clearly the frontrunners, and Derek had shocked the bodybuilding world once again. To come into his first open show ever and dominate most of the competition was a feat that very few saw coming, but it set up a very interesting final. It wasn't exactly clear who the judges had in first, but given Hadi's crisp conditioning, he was the favorite. But the show wasn't over. As the finals rolled around, the entire lineup impressed with their finals routines. 
But what we were really looking forward to was the confirmation round. It was obvious we were going to get a new open champion with Big Rami not being in the top two, so the awards were going to be exciting regardless. The finals saw some shifting of places among the top two spots, which was definitely meant to keep the fans guessing, as by the end of the confirmation round, Derek and Hadi were off to the left by themselves. This made it clear for anybody who understood the intricacies of judging and bodybuilding that at this point in the confirmation round, the competitors in the middle were not in contention for the title. When the awards were announced, Big Rami made history by placing fifth and following the most placings as a reigning champ since Samir Banu in 1984. In fourth was former Olympia champion Brandon Curry. In third was budding star Nick Walker, and the last two spots came down to Derek and Hadi. The fact that Derek in his open debut on the biggest stage in bodybuilding was in contention for the Olympia crown was insane. So win or lose, he would make history by making it as far as he did. But being the competitor that he is, he was hoping to hear his name called. And new Olympia champion. Derek wouldn't win, as Hadi Chupan would be crowned the new Mr. Olympia. While the rest of the world was shocked at how impressive Derek was, he knew he was going to be a contender from the beginning. He just had to prove it. Now, Hani Rambod was a winner regardless, due to Hadi Chupan being one of his athletes as well. Add to that the fact that he had also taken on Chris Bumstead, and it was a big year for that camp. But to the rest of the field, the cat was out of the bag. Now, as the months passed, the talks around the Mr. Olympia would ramp up again as everyone was building immense hype around their physiques with constant updates, and Derek was no different. It was clear that he was looking to bring a tighter and harder package than last year, exactly what he needed to have a go at the champ. With Honey Rambod having proved the ability to help him with his conditioning in the past, it was clear that they were looking to fine tune and perfect it, something that was much needed for Derek going up against Hadi. The reigning Mr. Olympia champion Hadi Chupan had built a reputation in the open for being the best conditioned athlete at almost every competition he set foot at. Having stayed peeled while coming in with improved fullness in 2022 made Hadi look very difficult to beat. There was no indication that the reigning champ wouldn't be as consistent as he's always been. And yet there was this feeling heading into the big show that this might be Derek's year. Call it hype, a bandwagon, or just a novelty of having somebody new at the top, but a lot of people were feeling that Derek was a better candidate to represent the Mr. Olympia. Despite the fact that it takes years to make it to the top of the Open, Derek's career so far had been nothing but unconventional, and his rapid success exemplified that. So while the idea of most competitors winning the Open Olympia in their second year seemed crazy, that wasn't the sentiment for Derek. If there was anybody that could accomplish that, it would be him, and everyone knew it. Further validating the sentiment was Ronnie Coleman, who in October of 2023, just one month before the Olympia, predicted Derek as the winner. You think Derek will be Mr. O 2023? Uh, yes, I do. As Derek walked out on stage in the pre-judging for his individual routine, the work and improvement he put in the offseason was glaring, specifically in his shape and conditioning. He was dry, drier than the previous year and a lot more vascular and striated. He was as full as ever, all while maintaining his signature lines that have been a staple of his physique since he was an amateur. Derek was clearly much better and a lot closer to his maximum potential as a bodybuilder. But his biggest obstacle, Hadi Chupan, was still in shape. But whoever the better competitor was would be clear once the comparison started. Derek was placed right in the middle, and joining him was Hadi Chupan. It was a difficult comparison given the two guys having the same frame and being equally as rounded and full. They were both right on par in terms of size, but the difference was conditioning, and not in the way most would expect. While Hadi was sharp, he wasn't as sharp as his winning year, while Derek was the sharpest and tightest he had arguably ever been. His V-taper and vacuum combination to add to his package only made it harder to take your eyes off him. It seemed to be really close between him and Hadi, and then Samson Dada got switched with Derek at the end of the first round. The next time we'd see Derek on stage in the pre-judging, it would be him, Samson, and Hadi, with each man given the opportunity to stand in the middle. While Samson dwarfed both Hadi and Derek and had a shape and flow that was just as good, he wasn't in his Arnold Classic condition. Yet, it was still close between the three men, and it looked like it could have gone any way, especially as Samson closed the prejudging as the man in the middle. With the first round of the confirmation underway, it was clear that nothing would change in the top three, as Derek, Hadi, and Samson were in the top spots. 
This was evidenced by the fact that the rest of the lineup missed the mark all around. Some of the contenders who had strong showings in 2023 like Andrew Jack, Michael Crizzo, and Hunter Labrada didn't bring enough to push anyone in the top three. So the question became, who in the top three would finish the strongest? Who wanted it more? They all had physiques worthy of an Olympia title, so it came down to the smallest of details. The position of the judges was not enviable at all. They all had to nitpick every aspect of these men's physiques, and when it came down to it, it was Derek who had the most refined package. From the front, the side, and in the back where bodybuilding shows are ultimately won. He had a physique that could take open bodybuilding into the next generation. Bringing the waist and vacuums of the golden era back into the open is something that fans had been wanting for a very long time. So, two of the top three having those specific features clearly indicated what the judges want the future of the open to look like. And it looked like Derek Lunsford. Evidenced by his finish in the top spot in the final confirmation round. He put on yet another flawless posing routine and left the stage with a bang and the confidence of a man who knew he left it all out there. As the finals rolled around and the fifth and fourth placers were announced in Brandon Curry and Andrew Jacked, the announcement of third place was going to make things very interesting. And with that, Derek and Hadi stood as the last two men standing, just like the year prior. But would the result be the same, or would history be made? Gentlemen, please take the first place Olympia gold medal. The check for $400,000. The Sandow. And the title of 2023 Olympia champion to our winner, And as has been the theme of his entire career, he in the blink of an eye was at the top of bodybuilding. The best bodybuilder in the world in fact. Overwhelmed with emotion, falling to his knees and slamming his fist on the ground, Derek probably thought he was in a dream. But with the confetti falling on the stage and a host of people swarming him, it was starting to feel all too real. Hadi Chupan did go over to congratulate his teammate before receiving the second place medal. Raising his trophy in triumph, and clearly still pumped full of adrenaline, Derek delivered a raw and heartfelt message to the entire bodybuilding world. Wow. What a moment, Derek. We've talked about this all year long, brother. You said, I just want to hear two words, man. Just give me those two words. And those two words were, and new! <laughs> Fantastic, Derek. You brought your all-time best. You made the improvements necessary. And just because you needed one more thing to celebrate tonight, Derek Lunsford, folks, becomes the first bodybuilder in history to win in two different Olympia divisions. Your 212 Olympia champion, now Mr. Olympia. Oh my gosh, guys. I literally don't even know what to say. Oh my gosh. You guys supported me so much. Thank you, thank you so much, guys. This entire year, I've been focused on training, coming back. And I wanted to make history. I was on a mission to make history to be the first two division Olympia champion ever. Number 18, Mr. Olympia of all time. And we did it, guys. 